The idea of a community is no longer definite. What was once the foundation and the pillar of hope to the young and the old alike is now emerging as fluid and often threatening to the vulnerable members of our society. Access to entry-level human rights like quality information for individual and communal literacy cannot be guaranteed as stereotypes and misrepresentations reign supreme. Kibera is not an exception. This is the inspiration behind the participatory photography, a concept by Professor David Blumenkrantz from California State University that is aimed at empowering girls experiencing urban poverty in Kibera. Giving the kids a chance to go into their community and document it themselves is the key. That's really, I mean, the bottom line is there's a couple components to this. There's vocational training, skills training, there's photojournalism training for because the, they're all these kids are part of a journalism club here at uh, here at Shafco. Um, so it's it's all of that, but then there's the 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 cathartic and the therapeutic, if you want to put it that way, aspect for the kids to have a voice. At the center of it all is the need to empower the future generations with realistic and sustainable skills that will stir up their ambitions besides enabling them to create the right narratives about Kibera through photography. I think it is important because one should have different skills, not only the ones in school but outside there. We are having a, a good team of kids who are, I can say, visually prepared for handling a camera and, uh, and knowing what the, the, the elements of, different elements of photography are. Shafka's Kibera School for Girls emerged as an ideal location to ground the participatory photography project due to their enthusiasm and appetite for knowledge, adventure, and growth. I just think that it's subverting the hierarchy is, is an academic way to put it, through Paolo Freire's uh, theories of the oppressed and the oppressor. It's subverting the hierarchy and, and allowing the people who are normally under the microscope to turn the camera the other direction. With the 17 girls enrolled, the slow but effectively structured mining process started. Fear turned to confidence, hope was birthed, and the resolve to soldier on became a constant as the girls systemically evolved. Photography is something that any, any person can do and it, it is also done in any place with any person and it is and it also involve, in, involves writing captions and invigilating people. Having a kid in Kibera know how to shoot, uh, how to shoot and uh, various elements of photography and incorporate that in, 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 uh, uh, incorporate that in enhan enhancing her skills, especially uh, the female gender, which uh, we could say is deprived of uh, skills in the skills and, and, and possibilities in the community, yeah, I could definitely say this is a, a success and it's only the beginning. Through the many trips around town, to the game parks, art galleries, and within the wider Kibera, the girls enjoyed real-time opportunities to represent their world and perceptions through the lens and to emerge with narratives never seen before. And I think for the kids it was a great exposure to see that there's more to life than where they are all the time. So I think those things are just mind-expanding for them, hopefully. The best picture that I've ever taken is the picture that we went in, uh, we were in wildlife, wildlife club and I took a picture of zebras walking around. David, however, never worked alone. He leveraged on the power of partnerships and incorporated different industry stakeholders to ensure diversity and depth during the learning and mentorship sessions. Renowned industry photographers, learning institution, 
and photography equipment manufacturer formed the core of the team that midwifed this futuristic concept. I'm a conceptual photographer and uh, I, do, I do a little bit, a little bit of photo, photo documentary too in Kenya. Yeah, so I think he was attracted to my work and uh, I could say scouted me for this uh, mentorship project in Kibera School for Girls. There's Shafko, of course, they're the home base. There's Nikon, who is providing the equipment and the gear and paying for the sponsorships and providing software and, and transportation to the field trips that we've gone on. And then there's USIU, who have provided students. There are NGOs in Germany who are sponsoring. There's my university, who, who I, I wrote a grant application, and I got a grant, which paid for all my expenses on the trip, fortunately. Um, at the last minute I got the grant and I didn't know I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So it's essential, you know. So to think that, you know, this is going to continue, it's a matter of like keeping as many of those partners engaged as possible. The homogeneity of this training enabled interactivity beyond the classroom, home visitations, self-actualizations, and parent buy-ins emerged as the other success enabler within this program. And with it, we web widened. Uh, she's so much interested mm. in what she's doing. And that's why I, I don't have any doubt with her. Good. She'll embrace you so much. It was a great experience meeting the parents and seeing how the kids live and where the kids live. And I think that one of the things we ta I talked about with one of the teachers after the first day of doing this was when you go to their homes and you see where they live and you come back here, you know what they're coming from every day, and you know what might be distracting their minds. You put a violin in one person's hands, nothing happens. But when you offer it to someone else, beautiful music emerges. This is the same with the camera. Through participatory photography, Professor Blumenkrantz has triggered an enabling environment, an environment for the vulnerable to thrive, and therefore to the girls, the sky is the limit.